Well, I was just saying, I don't know what to do with these anymore. It's been a little while since we've sat down and done an interview, but we are very lucky to be joined by the great man. He's just retired, literally just happened five seconds ago. He sits down <laughs> with back chat straight into it. Jack Redden on the podcast. G'day, mate. G'day, lads. Redden. How are we? How, oh, we're, we're good. We're very good. Now, I don't know how much of a back chat fan you are, but we ask the same question to every guest that we've ever had on this podcast. The first question, do you know what it is? I actually haven't listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> even no, 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 it's no, very that's good. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, better. that's, that's actually not better. what the question is, even though that was the first question. Now, <laughs> we know you've done a lot as a football player. Two clubs, 2009 drafted, Brisbane, West Coast, over 200 games. Um, you're runner-up best and fairest in a premiership year, mind you. Like That's a bloody good effort. But we're here to tell you, don't care about your football yeah. career, mate. We want to hear first, your greatest ever sporting achievement, not on the football field. Now, we've had athletes through that have been high jumpers, javelin throwers, poker players. They've been, they've been school musicals. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you can get real wide with this, and maybe it was a junior, under, under eight, under nine, Anything under ten. Anything athletic, really. It doesn't have to be yeah. a sport. Your greatest ever sporting achievement, right. not on the football field. Okay, so I, I grew up in a country town called Keith, and I played tennis. So I played, I played against women, everyone, mixed doubles, all that sort of stuff. I was all right at tennis. But then all my mates played cricket, and I was horrendous. So went up to boarding school um, in year 11 and 12, and all my mates played cricket. So I tried to make the transition. I was horrendous. Um, but it, somehow my mate was the captain of the first 11. He got me into the first 11, and... Uh, so I played first 11 cricket for yes. one game. Pretty good. One game. Walked out to the pitch, forgot my uh, pads, had to come back <laughs> in, grab my pads. Where were you batting? I uh, had three swings and then got out for a duck. So, <laughs> but I, I made first 11 cricket. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's Did you put pads good. on? You went back and went got, back and got pads, good. yeah. Where, where were you so, batting? You were at 11, were you? I was deep, yeah. <laughs> 11. <laughs> I used to see you warming up in the West Coast rooms. You never struck me as a cricketer. So you're not a cricketer. Nah, I have a crack, but I'm I'm not a great cricketer. <laughs> That's very good. I mean, Dan's a cricketer. I don't know if you, you saw the cricket yeah, I've ball seen your eyes lock yeah. onto that ball a few times, um, but, you know, we can't <laughs> all have tell trophies. Uh, I mean, it's just five wickets for 16 runs in a grand final. Um, you right? Yeah, grand final. Daniel Conts right there. That's the ball from the game. Um, coach came to me, gave me the ball, said, please, we need you. Yeah. And, you know, just pulled out five Have we got any footage of this or is it? That's a very, I mean, that very good question. <laughs> I didn't go to like Do we have footage? Trophy Express and get like a trophy made. <laughs> like just pretend. Oh. I wouldn't put a pass. Oh, it, easily done. Yeah. Now let's get into the great man. He's just retired from the AFL. Yeah, congrats, by not, the way. Not, yeah, congratulations. Much. Not delisted like Wilsko, but he's retired. <laughs> well, that's debatable probably as well because we heard he had a trigger on his contract that he hasn't taken up. But <laughs> he has stepped away from the game after a great career. But I want to take you back before football, Redo. You grew up in the country town of Keith. Keith. Right. Keith. Keith with an F, no, with a T H. <laughs> oh. A farming town. Cows, sheep, that sort of stuff. Yeah, a bit of crop. What, what do you know about farming, mate? Are you, are you a farmer? I know zero. That was a little town rat. <laughs> <laughs> mum, was a pl uh, mum was a nurse and dad was a plumber. So really? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you grew up in Keith, though. I, I heard maybe you and your brothers got up to a bit of mischief. Is it is it true you had to move house? Because you and your brother tormented the neighbours with eggs and water bombs and I don't know what else and maybe a school t a school teacher across the road. You had to, is that is that a true story? I think you'd be too old to be listening to this, so I can sort of uh, say that's true. But yeah, the poor bloke next door—he never used to give our footies back, so we uh, used to torment him. And there was a bit of dog shit in the gutters and that sort of stuff. But <laughs> well, um, you kick him over the fence and he wouldn't. No, oh, like obviously playing like country town. You think you'd chuck him over, but. They used to take the footies and wouldn't give them back and that sort of stuff. So, uh, not the friendliest neighbour, but yeah, he, he had a hard time. What, what was, was your what what was his name? Yeah, what was his name? I actually can't even remember. Because I had a neighbour, Peter, who lives across the road. Same Peter. thing. Yeah. You play cricket on the front, um, on the driveway with your mates, and you hit the ball on the grass, and everyone's like, who's going to get it? Because Peter would come out and yell. Yeah. Why would you be like that? Just give me a bit of a uh, bit closer on the mic. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Reda. Um, so, drafted 2009, pick 25. What a high draft pick, right? That was a bit of a bolter. <laughs> bolter late. Had a good grand final in there, Sanfil. So um, who did you play for in the in the Sanfil? Uh, so my region was um, Glenelg yep. with their Sanfil. So played that in school holidays and then I played school footy uh, first 18 um, in school terms. So you're South Australian, you get drafted by Brisbane. What's what's that move like, moving to, 
to Queensland? I think having a couple of years at boarding school um, really helped me and um, obviously uh, leaving leaving Keith um, in after year 10. Keith, every time you say <laughs> Everyone loves Keith. that Keith. It's I don't know, the boys used to say Keith. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know. So that sort of helped with the transition, mate. So you sort of have to grow up and um, fend for yourself a little bit. But leading, leading into it, like you're still 17 years old going into a... Um, you know, new system in the AFL, so it's pretty daunting. And you got blokes like Simon Black, Jonathan Brown, uh, Luke Power, those sort of blokes rocking around. It's pretty eye-opening in itself. So, um, but yeah, I think the boarding school and that sort of experience helped me personally. Voss was your first coach. I mean, so you've got Black, Power, Brown. You're playing with, and Voss is your coach, who premiership teammate of those guys as well. Like, was do you reflect on it? Um, I know you didn't get to play under Wusha, but sort of like a favourite son coming back to the football club um, under Voss. How was he as a coach? He's now coaching Carlton after a pretty big stint on the sidelines as a head coach. How was your time yeah. under him? I love Voss. He was a ripper. Um, he was a really good motivator of men. Um, I think he probably did go into it a little bit early, like he was a little bit green and raw heading into as a head head coach because it's it's a big role it's a lot of responsibility and um i think he acknowledged that after he sort of finished his stint at brisbane and then he made himself go back to port adelaide and have six or seven years as an assistant coach and he wasn't taking any other opportunities so um head coach opportunities so i think probably a little bit green um heading into it but like his motivation he was really good motiv motivator and um, the boys loved him but for whatever reason it didn't work out um, first year made finals um, tried to probably recruit too many senior players and it sort of fell away there a little bit but uh, really good bloke um, I think you do really well Carlton. you're at the end now so 2022 your last season on AFL list talking about 2009 does that seem like a long way away or is it, does it seem like it's gone quickly no nah, it feels like it's gone very quick um, to be honest, I think breaking it up in two clubs as well makes it even go probably quicker because there's a lot going on. But um, two two really different clubs, uh, Brisbane and uh, West Coast. Obviously, Brizzy, there's not much footy going on over there, and it's all rugby that sort of stuff. So you can go out on the weekends and dance on tables, and you get away with it. <laughs> I tried that when I came over here the first time; it didn't didn't go down too well. <laughs> but um, yeah, very different, and they've both got pros and cons. But um, very grateful for the experience. Was um, anything made of... Was that when Voss was a, named as the assistant at West Coast yeah. and then he went to Brisbane? Yeah, he was. So he did it. Yeah. Was anything made of that when... Yeah. Like, was that talked about at the club? What? So so it was it. 2000 and... Did he get appointed your first year, 2009? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, he did... A, I, I was at the function. It was like the breakfast opening the season. He did a speech. And he made this speech about setting your alarm. And... He's never slept in, right? He's never. I don't know if he gave the same speech to you boys, but yeah. <laughs> he said that he always set his alarm. He's never hit snooze in his life, right? And that's the sort of coach he is. And he wants to set the standards and make yeah. sure boys aren't taking shortcuts. And if you say something, you do something. So if you set your alarm at this, you get up at this. And then the two days later, it was the head coach of Brisbane. <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding? Yes, he was. He was. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, right. I actually never had heard that story. Yeah, oh. that's crazy. Um, you played finals in your first year, two thousand nine. But you don't play finals again until 2017. 2009, though, your first season, you come into the into the team midway through the year. Uh, you you go on to play 112 games in a row from that moment. Not sure how you didn't get dropped there in the middle. <laughs> but but do you think as a young bloke, well, no, this is just what happens. You play finals. Yeah, I sort of like the first season. I didn't play till round 15, so I, I got a I got a gig in round 15 against Geelong. Um, they rested all their players, so we managed to um, get a win that game. But, yeah, I suppose once I was in and then able to play two finals, um, yeah, I thought I th established myself quite well. But then, obviously, after that first year, after not playing finals, then we had a bit of a drought there. I was probably gifted a few games there. I probably should have been dropped once or twice, and I think if I was in a stronger side, I would have been. But um, I felt like I had to earn my spot originally, but then I was probably lucky as well, um, probably a couple of years in, not having to miss any games. But, I mean, you're underselling yourself a bit. You were fifth in the BNF in your second season, third in 2011 in your third season. So even if you were gifted games, you were performing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think my I've been consistent over the years. I just I think I've been consistently just average. <laughs> 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 but I, 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 I suppose I feel like I'm a bloke that plays his role, team first, that sort of stuff. And I think I hope um, my 
teammates um, can attest to that. But um, yeah, like I'm, I've just been consistent uh, football across across my career and um, the team first sort of mentality for me hopefully that holds held me in good stead I want to ask you about players you played with in 2010 but something happened at the end of that season 2010 mm. uh, you're in the grand final sprint Dan written oh, one, yeah, question. Dan written one <laughs> question for this interview and I'll let him be beautifully <laughs> and he was just <laughs> staring into I was the waiting. I thought you were going to something else bro, yeah, no, before that I but 2010 grand final sprint yeah put your hand up for it um, what were you doing there yeah honestly you, are you a fast runner? No, no, he's not. No, nah, <laughs> free tickets and accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> How did you go? Uh, terrible. Did but you make the final? Nah, like it's... I, so I slipped. I slipped at the start and what I'm were you slow, slow at the best Were you wearing times. runners or footy boots? Or? Uh, I must have been wearing runners, but like... So I slipped at the start and I'm slow. I'm like, oh man, this is going to be bad. But I like managed to somehow go okay and finish okay, but I didn't qualify any by any means. And then all the big dogs pull out late. And then they called me up for the actual main main sprint on half time. Hang on, so you haven't qualified, and they've they've gone. Oh, we've got to scrape the bell here, got to get. Yeah, to... I think Coxie Coxie was in it. He so he Made was trying final. to get free tickets and obviously accommodation. <laughs> Coxie, but he he's obviously pulled out a bit of a tight hammy or something. And I'm in the stands. I've with my mate took my mate over, and I've had six beers. And I'm like, <laughs> I can try. Yeah, I can I can do it. And I did it. And I was. Yeah, I think I was second last, but like, yeah, I'm not quick. It doesn't so. have the places, but you could see who the top three were, um, and you weren't obviously. Yeah, no. you weren't in that. But that's Red, Redo's never been quick. When I saw that pop up, I was like, "What were you doing in the grand final sprint?" I'm a Pinjara horse racing in a Group One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so 2010, which is what I was speaking about, was uh, you had a decent forward combination in that year: Jonathan Brown, Brendan Favola. Yeah. Played with Favola. We played with Feb for a year. Played with the big Feb. What was yeah. that like? I mean, you were obviously lacing them out down to Fairfield and Colts, oh. were you? <laughs> Spraying them down. Oh, my big high ball drop missed him a few times. But nah, Fev was a beauty. He was such a good bloke. Uh, very caring. Obviously, he'd come over, had a few issues and that sort of stuff. But um, we'd, we'd train and like kick it and you'd put one below his knees and you'd just fucking kick it away and boot it away. <laughs> like, get that shit up, mate. You, what's, the, what's that shit? So as a kid doing that and you got Fev, who's just a genius um it's pretty daunting but he's he's such a good bloke to the young fellas so caring so generous um but yeah good fun to be around he's he's a laugh because he came off the back of all australians at carlton and gets traded to brizzy and was only there for a year like must have been a whirlwind for a young bloke like he was a superstar when he came to, to brisbane right yeah for sure and i think training obviously coming over with his his status and what his, his resume was it's pretty amazing but i think we started the year amazing like we're four and oh yeah. Um, and then he's kicking bags and like you see what he does at training and stuff he's a freak yeah. um, so we thought like, we were on here we were going to win a grand final but quickly went south from there a, a favourite um, story of Jonathan Brown I don't know him that well other than him towing me up on the football field a couple of times early in my career your wedding um, I don't even know if you were on the bus but there was a bit of a bus ride from where your ceremony was <laughs> yeah, to the after I've party. Yeah. Were you on the bus? I wasn't on the bus. Oh, but I was, was going to ask yeah. you about the memories the of that. The Dennis Lilly story? Yeah, well, so, so anyway, we're just enjoying our, there's maybe some soft tunes playing over the, the <laughs> airwaves. And anyway, Brownie gets up yeah. and takes over. Like he, he took him, you know, he got a microphone from somewhere, had a big subwoofer, <laughs> rigged that up. And he, he held court for a 30 minute bus ride the <laughs> yeah. entire way he was doing chants yeah. he was telling stories yeah. is that the sort of guy he was yeah he, he hates the limelight that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he um he had so many cricket stories and old stories he can hold, hold the fort but he um he used to so his last couple of years he lived on the Goldie and um obviously playing in Brisbane but did he He'd do radio on Tuesday morning, so after the Monday reviews and stuff, he'd come over and stay at us, and then we'd review the game again. He's footy nut, loved it. But he'd he'd come in, just take over our house. Like me and Ames are sitting there, he like grab the controllers. What's for, what's for dinner, Ames? Like <laughs> we're watching this, like <laughs> just, it's Brownie's world. Like we're just living in it. But he's he's a beauty and like so entertaining. And so that's how you guys got close. He was effectively living with you. Uh, yeah. He would have been in the back end of his career then. And you yeah. were, how old were you? 2000, this is 2010, 11? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was young. I was, what, 20? <laughs> how are you housing yeah, how Jonathan you Brown? Linked up with that. Well, I'm, I, I'm, so Ames is quite close with Kyle's, so his partner. But it, it started to get a bit weird when he's staying over five times out of the seven days a week. <laughs> 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 nah, he, but he obviously, obviously the transition every day. So we'd leave work and it's in traffic. So he's, it's, probably an hour and a half drive back home so every now and then he just bunk it out 
So were you living on the Gold Coast too? No, no, so I was in Brizzy. Right. And then every now and then he had for radio and stuff, he'd stay up at ours, um, stay the night because he had early morning radio the next day. Right. So he stayed So at you were his halfway house. house between Gold Coast and yeah. Brisbane. So yeah. he just moved down to Gold Coast just for a bit of lifestyle, just the back end of the career, is that how that worked? Yeah, he, in, uh, in the hinterland there off, um, like near Burley. Yeah. Um, Currumbin sort of area. He just no lived worries. there, just bought a little ranch. <laughs> uh, I don't You'd know. You'd be commuting like it. pretty far to get to training and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like. Hour and twenty every day, so <laughs> it's a, it a big ass. But um, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't kick me out of my own bed in the end of it. It's, it's getting very comfortable. <laughs> did did um did like th- those players we mentioned earlier with power and black and Slappin still there? Uh, nah, Lappin. I miss Slappin by a year, I reckon. But like that, they, they yeah. were they were from arguably one you know the the best uh, eras of football ever. That team, um, yeah. three time premiership winners. Um, did you learn? Did you learn standards from them? Because he came to West Coast as a pretty, I, I felt like a professional, made and ready footballer. Was it learnt from those guys? Yeah, I suppose the thing, learning and looking at them as a young kid was how hard they trained. Um, I think the games changed so much since then, but just how how fit they were and um, how game ready they were. They were big bodies. They were bloody strong. Like Brownie, Brownie in the gym was pretty impressive. Like obviously that was his go as a centre half forward, but how he used to uh, emulate certain um, body positioning stuff in the gym and working on sort of stuff, and how strong he was in the gym was pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, he's the way their training standards were, how hard they train every day. Blackie was the first one on, last one off. Um, so he sort of set the standards for young kids coming through and looking up to those sort of boats. Did they have? I always think that fine sessions, the best teams I play with West Coast, being a one club player, I'd never know about other teams, but the best teams and when we were playing the best was when the fine sessions and the footy trips and the off-field culture was right. Yeah. Were, were, were they big on that? Were they yeah. big on fines? Have fines masters? Yeah, not, to, not so much the fines. Like That was new to me when I first came over here, which I loved. You got, you got absolutely I, pol- pulverised yeah. the first couple of years. Yeah, I did. I actually been alright last few years, but because um, you're old, because <laughs> I got no money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were big on the footy trips and that sort of stuff. Like everyone would get together and go on a footy trip and that sort of stuff at the end of the year. Um, so obviously go over to Cancun and those sort of th- like big footy trips. Whereas that's probably phased out a little bit now. But yeah. um, when everyone's in having a drink, everyone's there. Sort of. Bra- set Bra- up. Brownie, Bra- I saw Jonathan Brown skull a liter of milk on. A Fox Footy show, Jonathan <laughs> Brown. It was the first show of what? What show am I talking about? Oh, the bounce. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, oh, best on ground. Best on ground. Oh, just recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is right. that something he used to do? Skull milk. Is that a party trick that Jonathan Brown used to How roll? How many liters are we talking? Oh, I think we two <laughs> liters. <laughs> you really? He used to skull Have you ever milk? tried that? It's no. impossible. Is that what you, yeah. he used to do? That he's just done that for the. F- Oh, doesn't it's sound like it. You live with it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Speaking of um, Fox footy shows, do you? Um, I'm just going to play you like a, a bit of a video. Oh, no. Um, I just want to get your reaction to it. And um, Is this down? The, oh, yeah, yeah. This is after you've dribble kicked a goal, but it wasn't a goal. How do you know, mate? <la> yeah. <laughs> it goes on. Oh, yeah, he gets on the table. <laughs> he's on the table. Is this yeah. you? Jason Dunstall yeah. is screaming. Is he, are you playing for Brisbane or West Coast? Oh, I was Brisbane, yeah. So I dribbled one, but Did so he's, he's, he got he's from Cooperoo. He got blocked by a Geelong player as it was um, bouncing in. Oh, really? So you've done the yeah, dribble yeah, kick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and then the next week, so we at training, we we're doing a few filming at dribbling and we sent it into Dunstall, but <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> he what didn't like it, did he? There? Oh, that's right. good. Nah. Um, so uh, at the end of uh, 2015, so you, you had some good seasons at Brisbane Lion. Before I get there, Tom Rockliffe, like you guys, before you came to West Coast, I've always been a big fantasy player. Yeah, the pig. You and well, he was the pig, but you're always a decent offsider. A lot of tackles out of Jack Redden. You led the league in the AF, in the, in tackles at one stage. Um, did you used to discuss fantasy? Scores between you two. Do you just wax? You two are pretty close, nah, I think. I'm you, not like that, mate. <laughs> did you? I, I was honest You've retired with my now, mate. I, I reckon Rocky sometimes would be that third man in <laughs> and just get come up with the ball and here you go, up here. Like, or jump on the back yeah. of you tackling someone mate. else. You blokes used to start up a little bit in there. Yeah. 
Well, that's the only thing we get some love for. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't winning games. So 2015, um, like I said, you played finals in 2009. You don't play finals again for Brizzy. And um, with a year to go on your contract, you asked to get traded. What's what's that period of life like? Yeah, I, I suppose I'd been there for, what, yeah, seven years. And I was, it just wasn't working for me personally. So I thought a change would be really good. And obviously got in contact with, or manager got in contact with West Coast and a few other teams. And I thought a change would be good for my career personally. Um, since that first year, I hadn't, hadn't tasted finals. So I thought, um, why not get on the front foot and um, try try something different? And West Coast are really keen and it sort of suited um, positional wise for um, me to come across. And everyone said, why don't you go to Adelaide, like Port Adelaide or Crows? And it just, they were quite stacked in the inside midfielder space. So I just thought West Coast um, made the move purely on a football decision and um, didn't start great, but we got there in the end. <laughs> so, so can you just give listeners and watchers a bit of an insight as to how that actually happens? Like it's happening more and more. You, had, you were contracted, right, at Brizzy? Yeah, Did I was you contracted, to go? yeah. So like, how does that happen? Do you, do you ring your manager and say, hey mate I want to get traded or yeah. or is it a discussion internally at the footy club and they say you should be looking elsewhere we're not going to get games next year like yeah I suppose every individual's situation is a little bit different at times but just remember you're out of the game now so you can be honest I know but and how you as an individual want to uh, deal with it you can just say to your manager look I want to trade can yep. you do it with the club or you can get on the front foot and speak to the people at the club who's list manager coaches that sort of stuff so I was still young at the time, but my manager advised me, just get on the front foot, speak to Leper and um, give him the heads up, what you're thinking and what you might be looking and wanting to do. So I said to Leper, do you want to go get a coffee? And he's thinking, we're just catching up. I said, mate, I'm, yeah, oh, I'm thinking about getting a trade. And he hated it. Like he, he's just, so you, reaction was to go at me like, what, what, what's going on? You, why are you getting a trade? You won't get a spot and such and such and that sort of stuff. So I was like, oh, Right, this is um, defence mode a little bit. But, yeah, oh, that was my approach to it. Did you think, like, did it feel like you blindsided him a bit? I think it blindsided and caught him off guard a little bit. Um, and then... Were you in retreat mode then once you'd done it? Like, like at the cafe? Yeah, a little bit. And then he's like, what teams are you looking at? Is West Coast, that sort of stuff. So, um, he told me you wouldn't even make the, make the mid, midfield at West Coast. But, <laughs> anyway, got past that and then... I went home that night, told Ames that sort of stuff, and then I was having a sleep up top and he knocked on my door and he came up with a six pack of beers and he wanted to sit down and see where they tell me where the club's headed and that sort of stuff and the plan moving forward and how important I am to the, the side and that sort of stuff. So he um I think he obviously valued me, but I caught him offside initially and he yeah. sort of responded in that way. But yeah, every individual is different the way they handle it, but Did yeah. that almost lure you back, that catch up? Oh, because I love, I love Brisbane. I love my time there. I love the boys there and that sort of stuff. But I think my decision had been been made by then, and um, I was pretty adamant I want to move. Well, he, he almost wasn't wrong, was he? I mean, twenty fifteen West Coast played <laughs> the grand final, they lose, and you come over, big recruit, first round draft, uh, first round draft pick to trade Redden into the club, and you play some footy early um, from the start. Um, but then you get dropped and spend some time in, in the waffle in 2016 and in 2017. So uh, not 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 saying, but you know, Leper was half right. He was, yeah. You, you, you had groin surgery in that off season, didn't you? Yeah, so I had a few little lingering issues, but a part of us probably transitioning to a new system, new team, that sort of stuff as well. So accumulating probably little effects here and there, but. Um, yeah, he's probably sitting back after that first year. Like I told you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but. No, I managed to get through all that and I found a – I was sort of playing half forward. Probably had to evolve my game when I first came to West Coast because I was an inside midfielder tackling in, in and under to sort of get it out to the outside runners. But then obviously come over here, there was Pritta, Shuey, Elliot Yo, those type of players that were probably dominant inside and better than me. So they – rightly so, they were in there. But um, – I sort of had to evolve and play half forward, play wing. And I think that's sort of helped me throughout as my career went on. But I sort of had to evolve and change my um, 
change my role within the team and um, find different avenues to have success on the on the park. On that groin stuff that was going on in the 2015 off season, do you, do you think you should have been catching barrels um, in the surf in <laughs> Hawaii in 2015? <laughs> so I, I've never met Rhett, Jack Redden, right? And I'm out, I'm out, way out the back, right? There's barrels there. There's ten, uh, ten foot surf, hang right? Ten. ten foot. I, I promise you, ten foot surf, and I just say. See this head. He, he had a life vest on. He's paddling. He's paddling this board out to me. May as well have been riding a boat out the back of Hawaii. <laughs> in all seriousness, we're we in the softest part of the softest break. The surf may have been twenty centimeters high. Sitting out on a longboard, and Redo in the surf in Hawaii. I bump into Jack Redden yeah. as a surfer. So, were your groins to Yeah, I mean, you're sitting out there on the surfboard, fine. Yeah. I can still push you on a few, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, too, man. Nah. Do you remember that? Yeah, clearly. It was classic. Because, uh, I, I mean, you just, I reckon you must have been just traded. I had my wedding over there. I invited yeah, right. him. I invited, I just, I didn't write this in the run show. I invited him to the Bucks party. Yeah. Did you come? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, had, I, had, I was over there with other people, obviously. And Dane Beans you over there with? Didn't want to intrude. Yeah, Beansy, yeah. So. Didn't want to intrude in a, in a thing that you got invited to. Yeah. I just felt like... It was like, a bit know, of a soft... I, it was a I soft... Felt, like, felt, invite, so, felt sorry for yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> Better invite the new yeah. kid. <laughs> do, you, um, do you remember who was involved in that trade when you came over to West Coast? Who did Brizzy get? Yeah. X keeps telling me it was... Uh, so yeah, Eric. Eric. What's his name? Eric Hibbwood. Hibbwood, yeah. Right. Is that right? Is it? I don't, I, I don't know. I just didn't know. That was, <laughs> oh, I didn't know if that was something yeah. that you think about. Right. No, I was, I was Charlie, asking. Please I'm, look it up. Uh, you get, look, uh, it, was so, a, it was a first round draft selection to Brisbane. No, nah, I, so I looked a bit deeper. I don't think it was Eric uh, Hibbwood. So you did know? Who was it? I don't know who it was, but because I, I was like, oh, they're probably almost won there if, if it is. <laughs> Eric, Eric, he's a good player. So he's a very good player. But, um, yeah, I, don't no, I just don't know if that's like if part of the process of being traded to a club, if you like keep an eye on what they got and see how they go. Just yeah. pick 17. Yeah, so yeah. who was pick 17? Who was pick 17? Oh, I'll find that out. Oh, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Charlie. Dave, mate, you're going to take over. You're going to come sit over here next to me by, by Dan. I think it's time. Yeah. Very good. Um, 2016, why, why is that a hard year? You mentioned sort of coming into a new system, and but is it hard? Um, I don't want to say mentally, but is it is it difficult to to come into a new team? Not about footy, but into a new environment like that. Is it hard? It is. Oh, it depends on the individual. I think I don't know. Historically, you look at West Coast since I've been here. The, the trades that come in take a little while to find their feet. To be honest, I think I think Jets was probably similar in in certain yeah. ways. He was in and out of the team. Um, there's been a couple. Probably Tim Kelly of recent probably didn't hit his straps real early. He's yep. playing good footy now, but. Um, it is a it is a big thing, um, I suppose every individual I think probably Sam Mitchell's one that come in and yeah. just I mean he's old, isn't he? He's old, he's <laughs> he's got the wise head and knows got the he's probably the fourth premiership's help. Yes. Uh, but yeah, um it is a big eye. Now I think with me as well, so I had the adductor surgery and that that didn't go great because that wasn't what I need surgery on because it wasn't the adductor. It was actually a hernia. So then I had hernia and then I wasn't training till closer to round one. But I'd never, up until then, I had not missed any pre-seasons or anything like no, that. So that played, was... You played 112 games from debut. Yeah, so that was new in itself. So I had the injuries, I had um, moving clubs, that sort of stuff. And then individually, you doubt yourself a little bit. So probably those factors um, crept in a little bit as well. But managed to um, fight it out, get some consistent footy under my belt and... Here so before we get to your consistent footy, 2016, you're a little bit in and out, especially in the back half of the year. 2017, Sam Mitchell comes to the club. Yep. So what's Sam Mitchell like as a player to play with? Because you would have played footy with him. And then um, he becomes a real mentor and, and midfield coach yep. for you um, through your time at the footy club in, and you know arguably your best season in 2018. So what, what are your overall thoughts on Sam Mitchell? Uh, the biggest thing for me, I sort of... Um, I sort of noticed was he his ability to read the play and set his teammates up like he's always communicating always talking putting you in certain positions he's always looking out for his teammates putting your teammates first that sort of stuff it's like a team first sort of attitude I don't know if that changed because he was coming over to a new team and um, sort of finding his feet and that sort of stuff but his ability to set the stoppage up read the plays see what the opposition are doing that sort of stuff and feed his teammates and make his teammates better was the biggest thing as a player and then obviously his IQ his ability to um, dumb down a um, a messy sort of footy 
situation and dumb it down to everyone and relay that message in a real simple term. So I think that's really impressive for me. And um, he he was a big reason um, our midfield group fired in 18. Oh, we didn't have – I think we had a lot of star players in and out that year with Yoey, um, Shuey, obviously Gaffey at times. But we just had role players that were team first. And, um, yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. I mean, Sam Mitchell – We've spoken to a few boys in that in that midfield. So he comes out as a player in 2017 and goes into coaching. Is that a tr- tough transition? I mean, given that you no, you didn't play with Michael Voss, but you had the player coach transition a bit at Brisbane. But is that is that difficult? I don't know. Is that difficult uh, playing with someone in the next year? They're, no, they're yeah. telling you what to do. <laughs> no, nah, because I think he built relationships. If you've got a really strong relationship with someone, you can have those real honest uh, feedback to each other and I think he he was elite at building relationships with everyone on the list um, so he can whack you when you need to be whacked and then he's good fun on, on the flip side of that Do you remember um, Cheetah mentioned uh, the first midfield meeting that Sam Mitchell sort of um, presented the first week and said that um, put a picture of the cup up and on the on the screen said I'm here to win you guys a premiership and that's what we're going to do we asked Sam Mitchell about it and he was like oh I wasn't that forward but Sheeta reckons he was pretty much that's the line of uh, sort of the, the presentation yeah um, well, we didn't overcomplicate things and the reali- reality is we're all trying to achieve that success but like not many people actually sit down and think oh we're actually going to win this thing and if you, I think he reverted back to a few times throughout the year and said if we do this this and this we're a chance to win and hold the cup up at the end of the year and he he sort of <clears throat> it reminds you this is what we're about this is what we're trying to achieve throughout the year so if we keep doing the process and do these simple things right we could be in a position at the end of the year and it got closer and closer and closer and then um it ended up happening was 2018 your best year of footy like, as a whole i think so yeah probably probably the most consistent and i was able to play probably inside mid for predominantly the whole whole year and i had a coach in mitch that backed me the whole way and um yeah i think definitely most consistent consistent year and I was able with some of those other blokes out um, I was probably inside mid one of the first starting inside mids how important is that the the coach backing you in is that important for you or do you think it's important for other players oh 100% if you know the uh, the coach trusts you and uh, backs you in and what your assets are I think he he, he was really good at reading um, everyone's um, one words and how can that benefit? How can we put that all together and be a better team for it? Not have all the same one woods. So he, one woods like your, your, best driver in the your strength. Kit, right? Yep. Mm. So my strength was probably my turn up to each contest, my run, that sort of stuff. Shuey's is probably his explosiveness, his change of direction around the stoppage. Yoey's his um, explosiveness, break lines, that sort of stuff. And then you got Gaffy, maybe his turn up, his work rate all day, that sort of stuff. And how how we can bring that all together. He was he was a lead at that and um, letting you know what you're good at and he'll tell you what you're not good at as well. But he always pushes what you're good at and bringing us everyone together. You got um, player of the finals that year. Do you remember all the finals, Collingwood? 2018, uh, Collingwood qualifying, Melbourne prelim, um, Collingwood grand final. Do you remember all the games? As in my personal games? Yeah. I mean, you're player of the finals. You must have yeah. done something. I, I, I <laughs> Do you remember? Well, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't play in the first yeah. one, and I was a bit caught up in the last one. So Yeah. Uh, no, I was, like, I was solid. I think my form sort of rolled on into the finals, and we are lucky. We played... Um, two home finals which helps but yeah obviously that first Collingwood game was epic um, and then had a decent day against Melbourne when uh, we won pretty early in the piece but um, and then probably grand final was solid enough without being great but so so 2009 you played your first final 2017 you play your next final but um, straight sets 2017 or you, or, uh, no we got Port beat Port beat Port and then GWS lost to GWS so, so that's your second crack at finals 2018 you're not an experienced final player come 2018. You're not, you might be an experienced player, but so um, what do you remember about grand final week? You, you, you have, you, you, it's your sixth final in, in yeah. you know, 10 years of playing. I don't know why. I've, I just felt like my per, my best brand sort of matched finals footy a little bit, which was just pressure and getting in the way and just in and under as an inside mid. But I was, I was probably lucky enough to have you guys in the – 
in 18 because you guys had obviously made it in um, 15 and your experiences from 15 sort of helped us as a team I think in 18 and um, how we went about it and approached it and um, just just the advice that some of the senior players from 15 what they took out of that and leading into the 18 helped me personally but um, well, I think our whole year was based on process so um, we are there to do a job and um, not get caught up in all the other stuff that goes on on grand final day which I think previously maybe the boys did in 15 they really emotionally got in, invested in it engaged in it and yeah we went over there as uh, as men and had to, had to get the job done and um, I think that's why we were successful Did you have a few ticket requests coming out of Keith that day or? <laughs> yeah 50% of the population was there <laughs> <laughs> but no, we um like was the lead up you know you're from South Australia you've lived in Queensland you're West, you know well travelled in Australia and you play the grand final in Melbourne did you feel like it's a lot of expectation from friends family or was it just an exciting time how did you feel no I think it was just an exciting time and um you we had this I was definitely nervous I think the first two finals not so much because at home was just it wasn't foreign territory it's just felt like a normal game in a way um but Leading into the grand final, I, I loved every bit of the week. Um, training at Subiaco, we had, what, 30-odd thousand there at, at training. So that's another thing coming from Brisbane. Like It's just not a thing. We have, I don't know, five Look or six people. Thousand we yeah. And then, and then you go to and we're at training before grand final, we got 30,000. So it's just, it was pretty amazing. And, and that, looking back on my career, some of those games at Optus Stadium will be forever in my mind it's just some of the best experiences of my football career so um yeah but then leading I think running onto the ground that first time and then getting that photo on the bench and then it just there's drones going over the helicopters it's just full on um that's probably when it sunk in as that like, yeah it's happening and then we gave up five goals at the start of the game and then so JK JK couldn't nah kick straight <laughs> nah Bunga couldn't hit the side of the barn do you do you have is don't, that, put that, is, don't put that in. Is that, no, it's all going in, mate. There's <laughs> no, no cuts in this one. No, it is. There's no cuts, Maybe mate. not that left for shit. This no. is live, mate. This is live and true, <laughs> mate. That's what we do here. Does, do you have um, – is that your best footy memory, like winning the flag? It just sounds obvious, but is, that, is the premiership best memory? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think that's what you do growing up. You just want to win a flag in on the biggest stage of AFL. So the, th the thing that um, – I appreciate the most probably was winning the cup, celebrating with the boys, and then running around the oval and seeing loved ones and people who support you the whole your whole life and your whole football career and that sort of stuff and how much it means to them and being able to hug them in the crowd and that sort of stuff was pretty special. Still gives me goosebumps, but um, that's probably the most memorable part of the grand final is celebrating with the boys and then your loved ones in the crowd. Who did you say going around? I seen a lot of people. I had like a mate from Keith who sold it. He was actually when Tommy was kicking that goal and he turns around and celebrates to the crowd and my mate's right there he's, he's, he? he's in the picture and he just he, lo he loved it but <laughs> blokes like that like who I grew up with um, in the country um, good mate of mine and then obviously my family and friends from uh, back home um, celebrating with Ames and Isabel Isabel was around then so how old was is then like real young this is your first uh, first child yeah first child. so she must have been what seven months yeah so <laughs> you pretty have, cool you have, do you have your phone on you don't you because that yeah uh, uh, yeah, uh, I probably Reddo's wife. Reddo's wife Amy is pretty much nine months pregnant, I believe. So she's probably having contractions. I've got the phone. Fuck <laughs> 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 you, worry. I reckon <laughs> she knows you're here, right? She'll yeah, ring she Alex knows. upstairs yeah, yeah, and say, "Come cool. down." Alex will come through the door. Do you, uh, um, do you remember Reddo getting on the mic in the um, post? Uh, I don't, but I've seen this photo. Yeah, this so I've I've only seen it in like a montage of video, but I didn't hear it. Like, what did you? What you did had you the mic and you were up and about. He'll remember. He will act. No, don't no, pretend no. you don't <laughs> no, Mate, that, just give the people something. You're the most measured man in the history of the world. <laughs> no. What did you say? Have you heard the rumour? We fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> oh, I could not yeah. remember that. <laughs> yeah. No, Every it's, time it's I see, time. like, montage yeah, footage. You're so caught up it. in it. Yeah, a footage of that, um, what, the parade or whatever. It's always you up there, like, getting, yeah, yeah. getting up and about. Yeah, do you, do you, you know, on reflection, do you think you got carried away with your performance grand final day, potentially <laughs> up, you know, after the fact? <laughs> that was the best. The, the night, uh, like, uh, that night was the best night. And then on the plane home, that was some funny memories. And then I'm a toucan. <laughs> toucan Sam. I'm just leaving you on the one shelter down. today. <laughs> 
Yeah, and so I had a bit of carry on on the plane and that sort of stuff. It was a great night, and then I I went south quickly after that, but then <laughs> regained myself and I was good for the week. But You're actually, quite good form after Grand Final Day. I mean, Eugene is someone that. I think is worth touching on. Now, just remember, you have you have retired from the game, mate. So don't worry, it's not going any. Who, who's Eugene? To tell people who Eugene is. Nah. Don't um, worry. It's, this is a person. Yeah, so Eugene's my alter ego. I'm, I'm not great on the piss, but like I'm I'm good fun, but I'm a bit of a whirlwind, and it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> goes south pretty quick. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, alter ego, Eugene. So Eugene. Eugene, Eugene comes out after more than two beers. So, so, Redo, so Redo can handle some beers. Like, it's not like Redo can't, but, but Eugene usually yeah. rears his head. I had a couple of memories from post-grand final. Um, we were at Nick Nananui's house. We'd uh, all got tattoos that day in his kitchen. And, uh, uh, yeah, we'd been, we didn't have, we'd been drinking for a little while. It was the Tuesday after grand final. So um, been going for quite some time. And we were sitting on sort of the outside area and there was a fire and people were yelling. And, and then I think some social media got out and started saying, oh, look at this person, look what Lekka said. That was the, that was the day that oh, the Lekka yeah. video came out. Um, you see, know what happened, yep. right? And so it started, and then someone pulled something out and said, have a look at this. Robert Walls has said that we were going to win the wooden spoon this year. Someone had produced the Robert right, Walls article right, where right, he right. came out before the year and said, yep. won the wooden spoon. Anyway, story goes, well, no, not story goes. This is what happened. A few of us put a couple of feelers out and um, I hope you don't mind telling this, Reno, but I don't really care. We got Robert Walls' number. Great. Right, so this is about, it's not late at night. It's not, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a 2 a.m. phone call. It was yeah. 7 o'clock at night. We've been going Respectful for Respectful in that. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, of yeah, it was yeah. probably 9 o'clock at night, yeah. yeah. You're probably awake. Yep. Eugene gave Robert a call. <laughs> Does Eugene have an accent? <laughs> no, I read, no, Eugene's just red He's just <laughs> a few beers. <laughs> Can you remember calling Robert Walls after the grand final? Vaguely. You left, <laughs> <laughs> you left him a voicemail, didn't you? It, it wasn't. It was nothing. Do you say this is Eugene here? No, it was just an honest conversation. Or did um, you say this is He just Jared. questioned whether... You know, no, I don't think that was a name given. <laughs> yeah, right. Just questioned maybe, maybe whether, you know, selecting West Coast to win the wooden spoon that season right. may, or, may or may not have gone well for him, given that we were holding the Premiership Cup. Nothing wrong with posing the questions. Exactly right. It's just... Yeah. Constructive communication. Yeah. <laughs> you also, um, you remember that? You, you remember yeah, I do now. Yeah, thanks for bringing that. <laughs> That's actually quite time. You um, <laughs> you were, you were, you were carrying on as well. Um, yeah. Two time, two time. Yeah. What's two yeah. time mean? Are you a two timer? <laughs> no, I'm not a two timer. <laughs> What's a two timer mean for our <laughs> listeners? Go on, tell them. Well, I've won, I'll tell I've them won a know. nab cup, not nab cup, a nab cup, and now I see the premiership. So, yeah. Me, me and um, Josh Kennedy, <laughs> he won one as well. So JK won it. He won, he won an orange cup, I think. Orange, you know orange, orange cup. Yeah. Was yours nab cup when you won it? Yeah, it was, was I think. It? Yeah. So you, so so you were going on. You're a two time premiership two-time, player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's very good. We celebrate like we won a premiership. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And last one I had for you, which I, th- I don't know if you've been to do with this, but there was something that was up on social media this week. It's no longer up on social media. Oh, yeah. Is that being taken down out of your, of your request? <laughs> Not from mine. Who? who I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> so I'm you woke up one of the mornings after the grand final and you were tattooed by Texter. You had been yeah. ravaged, ravaged by Texter. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? It was, uh, it must have been a couple of days after, but the boys got the permanent Texter and I had, was covered in eagles, signatures, every man his dog signed me. <laughs> and I had a big eagle on my back with permanent Texter. And then obviously got home, Ames kicked me to the spare bed. Had the <laughs> Stinking of... Oh Stink, yeah, God. yeah. And then I've, I've slept just on this white sheet and the, on my back obviously passed out. And I got up in the morning and I looked over and there's just a big outline print of an eagle with a prem, premise on it. <laughs> That's great. Artwork. Uh, yeah. and, and then I've um, I kept that sheet. And then I... Um, <laughs> Did you? Walked out. Did you? The, Did you keep the sheet? Yeah, yeah. You still got it? I've got a photo on that. That's amazing. But I... Yeah, that walked out easy as I was having breaky that sort of stuff the next morning and just covered. Can you get the video up? Well, it's not, it's not there. It's been deleted, it's, mate. I've got it on mine if you want. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, it we'll, just, it. we'll produce it. Izzy didn't know what was going on. I was trying to speak nonsense to her. And <laughs> Hello. I just, I just it. Hello. Why are you so grumpy? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, are you? I, I, I want to ask about the Please. the Gabba rooms because you've talked about the Gabba rooms in the past. He, just remember, he won't. Well, he actually he will know. Yeah, he will know. 
He will know. I was going to say he won't know because he was at home home grounds. Oh, of course. Can so you've had to you've had the best of both, then you've had the the home gabba rooms, and then you've had the what do you yeah. call? What's the smell? Oh, the, like like chemical burning rubber. Like yeah. dis- you can't breathe. The, you, the, was that a thing? Opposition. Did you know that the opposition teams were having that when you were at Brisbane? No, nah, so I found that out in. Um, yeah, 16 or 17 when I <laughs> travelled over there in the away games, uh, away rooms. But I don't know. I swear like the opposition team, some get away with more than others, but they just make it as bad as they can for <laughs> the opposition, don't they? Like, There's no way you're warming up, having a good warm-up in that room. Correct. It's a, it's a shoebox. I just want to roll at the back end here, and then I've got a final question about your career, about some of your stats from the journey. So 129 games with Brisbane, 134 with West Coast. Uh, 119 wins, 143 losses. We'll thank Brisbane for some of those losses, I believe. Um, 10 Brownlow votes in 2018. Huge. Were you there, 2018 Brownlow? Yeah, well, we had it at the Crown. Oh, so we, we, we didn't did actually too. go over there, yeah. So yeah. you finish – well, I'm, I knew I'd jog, jog my memory on some, on some things. So 2018, you finished runner-up in the in the best and fairest. Yep. Best player of finals, runner-up in best and fairest. Big night at the best and fairest for you. But where, where were you? Yeah, I didn't, mate. I went – I, I had a bout of gastro <laughs> leading in. I had a big, like, it was a big week. We had a crack. Eugene was and out then every night. Fraser McGuinness, of all people, he, he started going down. And then I felt like I had, like, leaving, I'm like, oh, it doesn't feel good. And I've been to the toilet a couple of times. And then it just got worse <laughs> and worse. And actually, me and Ames made it. Ames got dressed up and we were ready to go. And then I'm like, this is getting worse. And went there. Went so, you came, so you can't. So you can Yeah, I showed up and I was in the room. So I'm like, this is getting worse and worse. And then I like, spewed up and then I just, yeah. You had to leave. So we left. And then obviously <laughs> he had a few awards. That so he won, so he's one player of the finals and the boys yeah. are absolutely charging Friday after the grand final. Absolutely giving yeah. it. Where's you? Where's, I just remember, <laughs> where's you, <UG? laughs> Nathan Vardy was yelling that out. So <laughs> yeah, 22 under 22 in uh, 2012. Didn't know that was a thing back then. Yeah. AFL Rising Star nominee in 2010. How'd you go with the votes in that? D- Dan Hanbury was the winner. Yeah, no, nah, I was. You got zero votes, just to let you know. Zero, yeah, was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got zero. I checked. Um, ranked third in tackles per game in 2013, third in total tackles in 2012 in the AFL. I mean, stats galore. Most tackles after 100 career games in the VFL, AFL history. Is it? Jack, no, no, you're nah. not first. Jack Steele, <laughs> first 666. Ben Howell at 626. And in third place by one tackle, 6-2-5, Jack Redden. Yeah, right. It's quite good, isn't it? Pretty good. That. Jack Redden is the only player, <clears throat> I would say it's still current, on the 2018 West Coast list to have won a game at the SCG as a visitor. No player on the wow. West Coast list had won as a visitor. Lewis Jetta had won 33 games at the, at the ground, but as a home game mm. player. That's a good start. You've had a... You've had a, you've had a You've had a bloody good career. Over 200 games, two clubs, Brownlow votes. Never won a best and fairest, but I think you're a highly consistent top five, top ten player. How do you how do you reflect on it all? Like you you finish up at West Coast, you happy? I'm really content, mate. I couldn't have asked for a better better career personally. As a kid going up, growing up, you just that's all you want to do is play AFL. To finish with two sixty odd games and a grand final is pretty special. So. I'm really content and the decision was made easy by me. Like I'm happy where we're at and I know where the club's headed. Um, I th- I just felt like the time was right and um, I thought a list spot would probably be better for a kid um, at this stage of where West Coast are at and where they're headed and um, couldn't have asked for a, a better career for me personally. Seven, seven years at Brisbane, I learned a lot at Brisbane, very grateful for the opportunity they gave me. But um, I'm so glad I come over here and experience uh, footy over the other side on the west. So, uh, very grateful and uh, humbled by the way it's all played out, mate. You had some attention over the la- over the weekend. Uh, we're, we're interviewing you on a Monday here. Has it been a big weekend after you retire on on Friday? It is. Like I didn't expect it to be this much, but obviously. Um, made the decision the club um, ticked it off that sort of stuff I tell everyone close to me um, but then tell the boys and then obviously it gets released and then everyone who you've sort of crossed paths with on the journey gets in touch whether it be for the phone call social media uh, text message or something and it just brings up uh, you reminisce on all the good times you've had over your career and it's pretty special you get a little bit emotional like it's it's pretty amazing uh, roller coaster journey so um 
incredibly grateful and uh, it's quite emotional over the last week. Yeah. Did you um did you get to speak to the boys like like did you get to announce it per se or did well, you just speak to some of them? I, I I personally made an effort to tell all the ones I'm really close to and then I well you know we've got we've got WhatsApps and that sort of stuff now I made a uh, just noted noted that I, what my decision was and uh, how much they all meant to me and that sort of stuff. But I'll, I'll use this next sort of three weeks after this kid arrives to really get around everyone and uh, I'm sure we'll get together and see all the boys and um, have a few beers. Are you still in the WhatsApp group? Have you left? No, nah, I've been kicked out. Nah. <laughs> That's cool. Nah. I... Um, I said said my goodbyes and nah. Uh, Are you still in it or not? No, nah, I'm out. Yeah. You, did, did you, you leave did, or did you get moved? No, nah, no, nah, I left. Wow, but, um, that's a I was probably reading the play a little bit. I was probably a week away from getting the ass. You got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, like it's awkward. It's yeah, like, yeah, Reno's still doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And they're planning Eugene stuff and stuff. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did um who was the uh, sort of most left of field person to hit you up um to like congratulate you on retiring? Uh, left of field. No, I think everyone who I've sort of crossed paths with like. I haven't had much to do, but like Justin Langer um, was obviously on the board for West Coast. He reached out to me and said how much my contributions to the club and that sort of stuff. And he's 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 an interesting dude. He's such a cool bloke, um, and obviously respect him, admire what he's done, in his cricket and coaching and that sort of stuff. It's so good. He's fine. He's working. I've uh, messaged him to come yeah. on back chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah, <laughs> I've got um, I've got one more before. I don't know if we're about to get into. Oh, of course we go into the social media. Um, one thing I was, um, I was just, you know, reflecting on your career as you do. And um, on the ground, it feels like you're always on like a, a 1v4 like punch up. <laughs> like are you, yeah. are you always amongst it? There's always a rip, like another yeah. rate Guernsey ripped or. I think it was later on in my career. I just got old and salty. Like <laughs> you slow, you just, you just wrestle, keep on the ground and you get your breath back. So I think, nah, I do love that side of the game and I'll probably start and then run off and <laughs> everyone else finishes it. But Wait, did, you, did you have a bit of lip on here? I was, yeah. Someone asked me, well, I think Dan yeah, asked was, me was, and I was like, like I knew you off the field clearly as a teammate, but as a backman, you just, you don't hear the mids chatting too much. So I didn't know. Like, yeah, uh, given your history of a few wrestles, and you're uh, tackling a lot of people, so you'd yeah. probably given it to him when you've taken them to the floor. No, I get on lip a little bit. Nothing like Scoey. He was relentless. <laughs> 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 he did all the lifting. I didn't have to do any, but Correct. when the times right, I was I was capable. I did forget about this one. I uh, went through your tribunal record through your career. Yeah, drafted in 2009. Um, Haven't missed a game. Well, I just want to talk to you about a few things here, mate. So just don't get on the front foot too early. 2009, time at Brisbane, faultless. Not, not, not even no sight. Not even sighted. Yeah. Nothing. Um, you get traded at the end of 2015, 2016. You spend some time at East Perth in the Waffle. 2017. This is when it starts going downhill. Rough conduct against Josh Kelly of the GWS. Accepted a one thousand dollar fine. What did you do to him? Uh, dangerous tackle. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's a bit of it's one of those ones. It's like uh, yeah, yeah. 2018, round 15, so not too far away. About 16 weeks later, careless contact with an umpire, <laughs> accepted a one thousand dollar fine. <laughs> what did you do there? I've I always bumped into the umpires. 2020, round 16, careless contact with an umpire, accepted yeah. a five hundred dollar fine. How did your fine go down? <laughs> what are you doing? Must have been nothing. Did you not see him? Nah. Can you remember him? But as a midfielder, because they throw it up and they back out that way, so you're doing body work on your opponent and you always come around because you want to stay engaged with your player and you always come around of where he's coming out and you clip him, clip his heels or something, he goes over and it's like a grand, two grand. <laughs> it's like they should pay, the club should pay that. Do players use the umpire for a bit of a screen? But yeah, if you, well, that's the thing. If you're smart and you're one of the gun opposition players, they're doing body work on you, knowing the umpires come back and they'll sort of get that split on you by using their path. So 2020, round five, striking Josh Kennedy of Sydney. Why'd you pick him? I mean, he's probably the biggest <laughs> midfielder in the competition, uh, except a $750 fine. What do you say? Struck him. You struck him, actually, oh, Jack. Him. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't have, it would have been the first one. What did you do? Oh, I actually can't do, remember. Can you remember any of these? <laughs> <laughs> 2022, what round 22. This is my favourite one. This one. Right, the, the Engaging in a melee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Offered a $1,000 fine. Did you accept it? Yeah. So $4,250. Um, 
Yes, it is. <laughs> it took me a while to do that. <laughs> so you've lost four. I know you're a money man. You'd be disappointed with that four thousand two hundred fifty back in the back in the someone else's bank. Yeah, a little bit flat. What did you do? Engaged in Mallow? Was it in the Derby? That was a Derby. Yeah. So little Caleb Sarong. I don't know why I mean him. Always, I love the way he plays and stuff, but he's a fiery little bugger as well. So we always had a few little mellows. But no, nah, I think I think it was a bit of a not a statement game for us because we we had a shock, shocking year and it didn't go away this year, but. The boys were on that day and made a made a bit of a statement that we're here to play. And I was actually sticking up for Jacko Nelson because he was doing a tagging role, and then they've all turned on him. So I had to go in swinging and turn in a bit of a melee, but looking after my little mate. So not only has Jacko been delisted by the footy club, you've been docked a thousand dollars for defending him. So yeah. what's he done for you? I should have we, just we left him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, okay, we've come to a very important part of the podcast, Jack. We're almost done. You can almost get back to Amy and make sure the baby is delivered on time and perfectly. I know you'll be down there. A bit of a wicked keeping yeah. action. Social media. <laughs> I'll bring my pads. Social media. Not social, social. social. See what we've oh, done yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, smart. Do, you want, do you want another one while we finish yeah. on? Charlie? What, what, I what, tell you, what did I tell you? To say? <laughs> I, I, I told Dan. Um, I'm flag metal. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's flag metal merch. Backchatpodcast.com.au forward slash merch. Um, if you want to get your hand on the last remaining flag metal jumpers, we're going to send Jack Redden away with one of those um, a little bit later on the show. So, social media. We are here. You've heard enough from Dan and I. This is where the people get to ask you the questions. I don't control what comes in here, mate. I just spit out, and that's what's going on. So, are you ready? Yeah. Charlie's having trouble over at the fridge over there. Yeah. Um, more lob. Should we miss this one? We already sort of talked about it. Yeah, we did. Um, Carla Pritchard underscore. Uh, who pissed you off most on field? Always the one starting fights. Absolutely love it. Was it Caleb Sarong? Was there someone else? I like. I love the way Joel Selwood played, uh, but he always had that that head. Do you always want to <laughs> crash it and go out? Um, yeah, he's a worry. Uh, yeah, the, no, not uh, probably probably Sarong. Kobe dot row. Uh, what was your pregame ritual? Any superstitions or favourite pregame meal? Nah, mate, I was I was pretty low key in that sense. I uh, I had speedos aware, but I uh, outside of that, nothing nothing too strict. What's um? While well, we're sort of deviating from social mm. media, I just thought, what's what's life after footy hold for you? After what you, footy, what are you gonna do with yourself? Yeah, I got to work that. No, I've I am st- uh, staying around till uh, early in the new year. Oh, um, yeah. right. Obviously, Izzy's he's got a bit of school and that sort of stuff. So, um, I am going. I'm got my foot in the door still with West Coast. So doing a little bit of West Coast still, but I'm starting a business next year with with a mate. Plug it. Which is oh, I just got an AFL license for a swimwear swimwear brand. So we're doing that me and Xavier. So got that on, um, and then I'm. I'm looking to start a third party logistics company as well so a little bit on and um, yeah I feel ready for the, the concrete jungle and where's the ready third to go. party logistics company going to be run out of? Asia? Adelaide okay yeah. very good may as well be Asia Keith it's a long yeah. way away Keith yeah Keith nah, Adelaide <laughs> um, okay very good like that uh, what about we've heard that Connor Morrissey music which opponent do you most want to hurt or injure <laughs> They're aggressive. Always, they're aggressive. Seem, always <laughs> seem to enjoy the niggle and physicality. Yeah. Thanks to a great career in the blue and gold. Yep. Yeah. No, I just I really really sat side of the game in an under tight pressure tackling that sort of stuff and sometimes on the back of it ended in a bit of a scuffle. But um no one in particular. I just I love that aspect of the game and um relish that sort of stuff. What about a training? Was there someone that you'd like to go out at training? Uh, I'm surprised what you and I never really got into it. I don't remember we did. Yeah, probably. I think like I think like Feisty recognised Feisty. Mm. Oh, I think anyway. Like if you know someone likes a bit of it, it's almost it's like not as fun. Yeah, yeah. it's not as fun. Yeah. It's like uh, I don't want to really want to start him up. Jack O'Nelson always was up for a bit of a his go. He was good fun on the on the training track. What about DX Ham? DX Ham one three zero eight. Uh, what would you rather? Everything you ate for the rest of your life is full-blown spicy or do barbarian drill for an hour every day with Scoey? <laughs> Hashtag will Scoey get mad at the diff? 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, will might, you get mad at the dip? I might take the chili food. Yeah, that's you nice. bloody will, mate. I'd absolutely <laughs> eat you alive in a barbarian <laughs> drill every day for the rest of your life. I wouldn't want to do that. It was a shock. Although you're not that fit anymore. Are you? No, I'm not. Are well, you, you've, got, you've got about, oh, I don't know, four four months and counting until you haven't done a run and you'll just be exactly like a little me, bit, mate. A little bit conscious of it. Like You look at the Masto, he's obviously... Have a look around. Xavier Ellis... It was Jedi. <laughs> and he's, he's struggling to get Josh it Kennedy. Kennedy. Josh Kennedy's been retired for, I don't know, three I weeks. Mean, uh, yeah. Who ate Josh Kennedy? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Josh. Um, no, listening. Are you, are you, what's, can you talk us through the diff? Ah, oh, the diff. It's a bit of shit talk, but obviously the boys didn't get it done in 15. I come in 18. Oh, in 16. And we win a flag in 18, so. How did you know to ask about the diff? I'd say, I, just from um, like, a lot of uh, congratulation so, um, social media posts and stuff idiot. calling him the diff so literally for a week after the grand final two time two time two time chat <laughs> I'm the diff and then roll around on the diff and then Eugene and come back out and then it's just on the tape <laughs> did you come to Hong Kong on the footy trip yeah just a shock just a sh- <laughs> no I was I was not well <laughs> um, uh, no we've asked about that uh, we've asked about that who, uh, Henry dot bear one. Who's got the worst chat in the Eagles dressing room? Worst chat. Oh. Probably Yowie. Yowie loves a movie quote, that sort of stuff. He's very entertaining at times, very obnoxious at times. <laughs> <laughs> but he's hit and miss. No, he's good fun, Yowie, but it's up there. Um, <clears throat> filthy underscore Phil. <laughs> Filthy Phil. Now, uh, Redo played mid like a backman. Is his greatest football regret that he'll be classed as a mid? <laughs> you would have fit right in in the back line. You would I, have. If I hung around, I was going to ask a question, can I go off half back? But uh, no, nah, I think uh, me personally was a very defensive type of mid. Probably my inability to break lines and create. I was sort of naturally that defensive midfielder. But uh, I thought I, like at times balanced out sort of our, our other midfielders at times and it worked well as a, as a unit, but um, I would love to play a half-back. Bit of a butler type. Uh, if we're talking about merch, there is some Backman merch still out there the is. back here. Yeah. Backchatpodcast.com.au forward slash merch. Backs only. It was the midfield's fault. <laughs> You'd actually wear that very well, Redo. We might have to get you one on the way out. Uh, last question. This is from the lads. How do you like your eggs? Um... I'm definitely a um, poach, yeah. Poach? Yeah. Okay. White wine vinegar, make it. Dan, you? Um, Fuck. Yeah. I'll you know, bro. <laughs> no, if, you've like, if you like poach, can I introduce you to perhaps a 65 degree egg or a slow cooked egg? Yeah, I was, I was going to say that, but I was yes. like, oh, I don't know if anyone. <laughs> Mary, Street, Mary Street yep. do a very good one. Yep. Thank you very much, Jack. They are, and they've been nice. That's m- all we have time for, back yeah. chat. Have, Thanks have, for coming. You don't time, like them? We have time for one more question. Yeah. Fill it out, fish, yes or no? No way, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you a filet of fish? Thank you oh, very wow. much, Jack Redden. That's <laughs> all we you, have time for. Are you getting for. a filet of fish over a cheeseburger? Oh. Uh, no, no, it's like probably in my rotation, like one in every four. I'll, I'll grab the went fillet. To, went to Macca's on the weekend. He made me order a filet of fish. So oh, it's just man. a sickening behavior. I felt, it made me feel sick ordering it, let alone yeah. eat it. Yeah. And 20 minutes later, you're regretting it. Redo, let's start <laughs> and dust it, mate. Back chat. Did you enjoy yourself? It was good. Thanks for having me, lads. Thanks for the beers. You've had a great career. You've only had two of them. Eugene, we've kept you under wraps. <laughs> um, I do want to thank our partners, our sponsors, Shelter uh, Brewing, uh, Co- Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Whippersnapper, um, Leaderville Camera House, uh, Leaderville Cameras, I should say, and, of course, Dean Bradley. You guys make uh, us happen. Uh, Backchatpodcast.com.au. Find everything we need there. If you want to follow us on socials, backchat double underscore. VIP for patrons. Sign up there. We're going to have a bit of an extra chat with Jack Redden right about now. We're done. See you, Dan. See you, Jack. See everybody else.